Hello and welcome to this section of Calculus 1 Extra Practice with Integration. Here we're going to continue working uh, problems dealing with polynomials and integrating polynomials. Uh, they, they increase complexity just a little bit, but honestly, once you know this basic idea that we've learned in the last section, then all of the future problems follow through, but you just need to get some practice. So that's my job here, show you some practical examples and give you that practice. So let's say you had a problem that was the integral of t to the fifth power minus 1 over t to the fourth power dt. The first thing I want to point out is there's no x here, right? There's no x's. So that's something you kind of need to get used to. When you integrate over x, right, um, you know, you have dx because that's what you're integrating over. This variable here, t, it's, it's called a dummy variable. I mean, the integration that you do can be over any variable you want. In this case, it's a function of t, which usually represents time. So I might be adding something up that's changing as a function of time. I don't know, maybe I'm adding up the wind speed and how it changes as a function of time. So I'd have a function of time there. When I have dx, I'm usually talking about something that changes as I move through position, through space. So, you know, dx, dt, dy, da, db, it doesn't matter. It's just a change over some variable, and my function is in terms of that variable. So don't worry, you know, freak out if you see that it's a, a t or an x or a y or a z or a k or anything. It's all the same math. You just carry the variable through the problem. So in this case, I have the following. Now let me give you a, a piece of advice. Anytime I have something like 1 over t to the fourth power, I always change it to look like this, t to the negative 4. Because you can do that with exponents, right? If you move it up, you change the sign of the exponent. That's something you should learn from algebra. So when I get rid of the fraction, I have to make it negative like this. The reason I do that is going to be very clear uh, in just a second. Because when I do the integration, the first term is 1 4, uh, 6, get rid of this here, 1 6 because 5 plus 1, t to the 6th power, right? That's taken the, the rule that we've learned before. The minus sign stays along for the ride. How would we integrate this one? Well, it looks different, but it's the same thing. 1 over. What is this exponent plus 1? Negative 4 plus 1 gives you negative 3. t to the negative 3 power. Now, this is an indefinite integral, so we always have a constant, an arbitrary constant of integration. So simplifying this further, it would be 1 sixth t to the 6th power. This double negative gives you a positive. And then we have 1 third, right? So we have 1 third, but this t cubed, this negative t to the negative 3 can then be moved back downstairs if I want. 1 over 3t cubed plus a constant, and this is the answer. I mean, really, this is the answer. This is all correct. It's just how you choose to represent it. I'd make this into a positive. I could have left this as one-third t to the negative three power. That's totally fine. I can leave t to the negative three power. But since the original problem was given to me in terms of a fraction, I choose to be nice and return the answer in, in terms of a fraction also. So I'll just move this and make it a positive. But really, it's the same thing either way. So the answer you get is one-six t to the sixth power plus one-third or 1 over 3t cubed plus a constant, all right? So not too, not too bad. Uh, you just have to apply that rule to whatever you see. All right, so what if you have something like 2t plus 1 quantity squared dt? How do, you, how do you do this? Well, this looks nothing like what we've done before. Yes, we have 2t plus 1, but the whole quantity is squared, and that really changes the whole thing. You know, when I gave you that rule that says, here's a polynomial, here's how you integrate it,